Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebraic graph theory. Today, maybe the most important notion of algebraic graph theory. I want to go a little bit into details. Uh, this completely underrated fact that graphs are matrices. And we will see today that they are literally are matrices. Um, and matrices, obviously, then are graphs. So there's this beautiful interplay between linear algebra and graph theory. Um, before we can get started, I need to set up some notation, but eventually we'll see matrices and graphs. And uh, I don't know how you feel. Both of these objects are among my favorites ever. So I'm very happy uh, to have graphs and matrices in this talk. Quite a few graphs and quite a few matrices. But let's get started. Um, so in graph theory, there is this, well, depends a little bit what you want to do. There's this difference between a simple graph and a multigraph, which is always annoying. So I need to use at least this slide to uh, specify my convention because eventually I will just say graphs and, and I need to make sure uh, that I, I you know what I mean by graphs. And by graph, I mean really a finite simple graph. So finite, you will see that in a second, is really the, the condition on having matrices. Otherwise, you would have some infinite grid, and that's not so nice. So let's stay with finite things. Uh, so finite, everything is finite. I will never say that again. Drop that adjective. Everything you ever see is finite. And then there's a difference between a simple graph and a multigraph. And multigraph is essentially what you should call a graph, because it's the most general setting in some sense. But in, in some other sense, a simple graph is what you should call a, a graph, and I will call like simple graph or graph. So graphs are simple graphs. And simple just means I don't have any, uh, uh, no loops, no loopies, and I have no parallel edges. In some sense, you could think of it like I have simple graphs, I have a road system and I have a rail system, and I consider them separately so that I have, well, a simple graph where every edge between the vertex is, between two vertices is unique and you don't have any of those, of those funny loopy things. And the multigraph is just allowing everything you want. So you can have parallel edges and you can have loops essentially without restriction. And the combinatorics usually changes a little bit. That's why I need to be uh, precise what I mean. And I usually am very lazy and I just think of graphs uh, as finite simple graphs. But we'll see multigraph, for example, today as well, because they kind of give you the more correct picture of a matrix. But let's start with graphs. So simple graphs, here's a simple graph. And I would go like to go to a matrix and it will be a zero one matrix. And the zero one comes from my restriction of having a simple graph, which means I never have double edges. You'll see that much nicer in the next illustration with the multigraphs. But essentially I can go from a graph to a matrix as follows. I label my vertices, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, here's five, here's six. I label my rows and columns in exactly the same way. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, just label them through. Uh, similarly down here, three, four, five, and six, and you just read it off. One is connected to five and two, one is connected to two and five, and that's where you put the ones, and otherwise you put zeros. That's why you get a zero one matrix. Four is connected to five, so three, five, and six, Four is connected to three, five, and six, and so on. Six is just connected to four, so six just gets here, um, just here, my little four edge, and so on. So you get a zero one matrix, and this is called the adjacency matrix of a graph. It's actually better. You get a square matrix, and the diagonal is zero. Why is the diagonal zero? Because loops would give you elements on the diagonal, but I say I don't like loops. So I just uh, have no loops, so diagonal zero. And it's symmetric simply by one is connected to five, and then five is connected to one. So it will be a symmetric matrix. And symmetric here just means I can mirror it along this line, and it will be the same upstairs and downstairs. And this is a bijection, and I will show that a little bit on a, on a better slide later on. But right now, this adjacency matrix is a quite a cool way to encode a graph in a zero one matrix. And if you go to a multigraph, you can have bigger entries. Um, so then the only restriction is symmetric and square, and it works exactly in the same way. Maybe let's do uh, number now maybe let's do number one and number two. So here's number one, and you just see that it's connected to two, 
right? So it's connected to two, it's connected to three, it's connected to four, it's twice connected to six. So you put a number two here. And for example, two has this funny loop. So actually here you get the diagonal entry. And if two would have two loops, you would get the diagonal entry two and so on. So you really get any type of matrix here. It's still symmetric because of the property that three is connected to five, that five is connected to three, but that's essentially the only restriction you have. And you still have this uh, bijection between a really, really beautiful bijection between um, graphs and matrices. And now it's essentially all matrices. Note that all my matrices here have natural number entries because that's what the graph is. The graph is some counting. So the only entries I ever see are counting of edges. So I see natural numbers, but I potentially can see all of them. More precisely, the adjacency matrix gives a bijection between multigraphs. So let's just phrase it for multigraphs and symmetric square matrices with n natural number entries. And this is really, really fantastic. And the inverse is also pretty simple. You can just read off the graph uh, from the matrix. So if you have a matrix, let's, let me do a matrix one, two, three, four, a small one. Then I just put two vertices, uh, one and two, and I have one loop. This is this one here. I have four loops here. Oh God, four loops, one, two, three, four. I have uh, oh, sorry, three is because it's symmetric and I have three edges between them. And there you go. I can read off like the inverse and the graph from the matrix as well. It's really beautiful and everything kind of matches perfectly. So this is really the starting point of algebraic graph theory because now you should use matrices, linear algebra to describe graphs. And maybe you can actually use graphs to describe properties in linear algebra. And yes, you can. Um, but the easy example is, for example, the isomorphism of graphs, which is just conjugation uh, in, on the matrices. If you don't know what an isomorphism is, we just put it to the matrices, and this is just conjugation by permutation matrices. And that's what it is. And there are similar statements for all other types of those graphs, and multigraphs really are, uh, in some quotation marks, but anyway, uh, n-valued matrices, which is really, really uh, such an amazing statement and highly underrated fact in all of mathematics and maybe in life itself. Well, maybe not in life itself, but certainly in all of mathematics. And of course, you can beef that up. So how can you get rid of the condition of being symmetric? You put or you break the symmetry, you put orientations on the edges, and then you get the same type of statements for those directed multigraphs. So let me do one more here. So the edge here, one, it points to two, one points to two, one points to four, one points to four, and one points twice to five. So you get uh, zero, one, zero, one, two. And six, for example, doesn't point anywhere. So you get a complete uh, zero column here. But anyway, you can get, using directions, you can get rid of the symmetry and you get this now the statement that there's a bijection between essentially all n matrices and those directed multigraphs. Anyway, I don't know how you feel. I said again, this highly underrated fact in linear algebra, in graph theory, in combinatorics, in mathematics, maybe in life in general, no, probably not, but in mathematics is that graphs and matrices are the same, which kind of explains why both of them are so successful because graphs are fabulous and matrices are fabulous. There you go. And they're essentially the same type of objects. Anyway, we'll take it from here. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And I also hope to see you next time.